Sometimes I miss being sick. The grimiest part of me wishes I had stayed in that familiar city of gray and mental illness and whatever the opposite of healing is, where there was nothing to laugh about but plenty to write about. I've considered myself to be recovered from my eating disorder for three years, but I still write about it in present tense. I also still keep all of my exes in my contact list. And for once, I don't want to write about this. For the first time, I am embarrassed instead of proud of all of the mad things I have done for happiness. When a friend at dinner makes a casual comment on calories, the scoreboard in my head illuminates with numbers again. Once, I cut a ribbon the size I wanted to be and wore it around my waist like a bracelet. Bathroom scales make me feel nostalgic. Like a scrapbook, I flip through snapshots of my sickness, the suppers of tobacco smoke and red lipstick, how I used to pack my lunchbox with floss and teeth whitening strips. Last night, I painted my nails when I was hungry. I can't eat until the polish is dry. I don't want to go into more detail because what if you mistake this poem for an instruction manual? I don't know how to talk about the rabbit hole without accidentally inviting you to follow me down it. When recovery is not all yoga mats and tea and avocados, it is work. It is reminding myself that sucking on ice cubes does not count as dinner. Body, forgive me. It is not healthy to drink so much water that your body becomes a bathtub, your organs float in like Lufus. Body, forgive me. Trying to ignore the caloric calculator in my head is like trying to ignore television subtitles, and sometimes I just can't. Body, forgive me. Recovery is hard work. Not wanting to die is hard work. Every time you asked if I was full, I heard you say fat, but I'm trying so hard not to do that. But I cannot unmemorize the calories of a peppermint. Wanting to die is not the same as wanting to come home. And I'm still trying to remember that.